Hello, everyone. I'm going to take my glasses off so I'm not going to glare when you're looking at me right now. Um, I'm Michelle Pekansky Brock. I am faculty mentor with CVC and At One. And I'd like to welcome you to today's session Brand Identity How to Be the Brand Students Remember. This session is one I have been looking forward to for the entire series since. Um, I found LaTanya. We're actually colleagues at Mount San Jacinto College. We teach together and we connected on Twitter and I saw some of the stuff she was doing. I said, your colleagues can really learn a lot from you. Would you be interested in being part of our Going the Distance webinar series? And she fortunately said yes. And I believe that you are going to take so much away from LaTanya's expertise. Um, she teaches social media marketing at Mount San Jacinto College. And if you're thinking, what the heck does that have to do with me? Well, you know, you're teaching in the 21st century. And so a lot of this session here today is just about connecting with your students through video. Uh, which is not easy to do. It's hard. It makes us all go to vulnerable places, but that's okay because we're all human. So we're going to lean into that together. I'm going to pass things over to LaTanya and uh, let her kick things off. Thanks so much for being here, LaTanya. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think we're going to use a word throughout these sessions, and it is going to be ready, 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 ready. Is everyone ready for this morning? <laughs> thank you all so much for the love, and thank you all so much. That's it, Sylvia. Thank you all so much for the love and the thumbs up and the celebrations, and um, you all ready to get started? Ready, 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 ready. All right. So thank you so much, Michelle. Um, she shared all of the information with you all. And um, I hope hopefully you all have had your cup of coffee. You all have your water next to you. And um, we are now about to, well, we're going to get started on um, our, 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 uh, I want to say our show, but our session for today. So let me um, make this bigger. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. So today, you all, we're talking about um, brand identity, being the brand that your students remember. And so in this, I want to make sure that you all take notes, pay close attention. Um, and just like Michelle said, we'll still have the presentation slides available to you as well as the video, just in case you miss out on something and you wanna go back and you're thinking about how do I stand out and how can I be most memorable with my students? Um, it's not as difficult as you may think. It's just sometimes we need to go back and evaluate and pay attention to how am I being shown um, in my classrooms and with my students. And um, video plays a major, major part in, in regards to it all. All right. So let's begin. We're talking about brand identity, how to be the brand that students and not just students, but other people remember. All right. So let us get started here. Now, just like Michelle said, um, I am an associate faculty at Mount San Jacinto College, and I have on here part of what I do. I instruct. I instruct social media marketing. I instruct advanced social media marketing, and I also instruct brand building and design at Mount San Jacinto College. But who am I? Okay. I'm the founder of the customer culture. I am also a customer journey strategist. And as I said here, I said who I am and think about who you are, are made up of nouns and adjectives. That's exactly what it is. And so I always share this little story with um, students. Um, as well as fellow colleagues, because a lot of times we're in the classroom or we're talking to people. And when we are putting ourselves out into the market, remember, we always have to be relatable. And people really, really, as we'll get down further um, into our slides, 
telling, sharing your story. And I know you also received a bit of this previously, um, I believe last week or a couple of weeks ago in regards to storytelling, but I always love to share this story. When I was in school, when I was in college, you all, I was in a business class and um, I still remember this so distinctly as you all maybe remember your other teachers as well. But I remember in class, I had a, an, a professor and in class, they would always require us to do big presentations. And when I say big presentations, I'm talking about slides, sliding in, animation, all of these things. Now, we as students were sitting in class thinking, why in the world would this teacher want us to do these big animation, animated slides and all of these things? And we're, in, we're, we're in, in this class that we're in. And so even with that, we're having our little, you know, your little um, your information on your little cue cards and all of that. But guess what? They would not even allow us to use cue cards. So not only did we have to make these big presentations in class, we could not look at our cards and um, at least get a cue of what it is that we were going to say. And there were probably about four to five of us as part of it. Now, the thing is, that means we had to do what? We had to memorize what we were going to say while we were standing in front of our presentation and the slides are going on behind us. Now, the thing is, as time went on and then when it got to my part, I'm very, I can be as someone, you know, people might say, I, I, I say I'm, I'm thunderous as, as opposed to saying the word loud. I say I am thunderous. I gave myself another name because what began to happen was when it got to me, when it got to me, you know what the, you know what the, the professor said to me? He said, you're too loud. He said, you're too loud. And in that, I found myself feeling as though I needed to quote unquote dummy down become you know softer in my speech can we speak softer in our speech of course we can but part of who I am I have a my voice has a tendency to project so as time went on and 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 that still sticks with me you all to this day it's part of who I am it's part of my story and as time continued to flow, and as I began to operate in what it is that I operate in, here I am a professor at Mount San Jacinto College. I also do a lot of trainings elsewhere. I found myself standing in front of auditoriums, sometimes with no microphone. So guess what? Because I'm quote unquote thunderous, there's lit literally no need for a microphone on many occasions because of my voice being able to carry. And so I say all of that because it literally is part of my brand. It is who I am. And so never go out into the marketplace or when you're in front of your students, I'm saying to you, be who you are. Be who you are, because who you are is part of your brand, all right? And I always like to share that because there's never any need to dummy down. So I say, who am I? I am, I am thunderous. Let me fix this here. It's like my screen wanted to, wanted to uh, okay, freeze on me. I say I am thunderous, you all, because they told me so. So why not bring what? Why not bring the thunder? All right. And so this is what we're, we're going to be talking about um, as far, far as you all and your brand. So the goal of this session is to enable you to know, to enable you to quote, number one, know and articulate your advantage points your value proposition. The second is to sharpen your art of storytelling, just like I shared. And the third is to enhance content creation through video. All right, you all ready? Can I get some ready, 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 readies in the room? All right, let's go, let's go. 
So before we even get started, the, before we get started and, and we keep going here, I want you all to recognize what is brand identity. So when we talk about brand identity, you all, it is that lasting impression that you leave on the hearts of other people. Um, it's how they perceive you. And so, and not only just how they perceive you, but also their experience with you. It is that thing that portrays to the world your personality, you being able to share your expertise, your skill sets, your competency, attitudes, actions, and even being able to share your achievements. Um, and that is the thing that differentiates you from others, whether we call them your fellow colleagues, every one of you that are here in this session today, you are different from the person that is next to you. I don't care whether both of you all may be introverts or extroverts, there's still something about you that is different from the person that's next to you. And it is that thing that your students have the ability to perceive. And at the end of the day, they'll tell you exactly how they perceive you. The more and more you share information, the more and more you give out, the more and more you're comfortable in your skin and being willing to be sometimes being vulnerable. Um, and that just means being more relatable to your students, they will appreciate it more and more. And another part of brand identity, you all, it includes your logos, your fonts, your colors. As you all see, what do you see behind me? I love the color red. I also love flowers. I wear red lipstick there's part of me that has red hair. And so when people recognize me and when they see me a lot of times, oh, you already know. What do I love? I love the color red. <laughs> yes, thank you for the hearts. And so that is literally another part of who I am. And so when my class sees me, especially when I am on video, when I am doing my lectures on video, normally they see this background. Unless I am out and about and I'm actually creating content somewhere, but when I begin to put together my videos and all of those other things, you're going to, most of the time, you're going to see a hint of red somewhere because that is part of who I am. That is part of my brand. It is part of my um, packaging in regards to it all. All right. So now when we talk about that as well, who all remembers, who all knows Beyonce? We all know Beyonce, right? All right. Yes, 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 yes. We all know Beyonce. Well, we already know Beyonce, she's a brand. And she has a brand identity that is filled with, let me move my face over here. She has a brand identity that is completely, re I see all these hearts and these celebrations up in here, but she has a brand identity that is completely recognized in, her mar in, in the market. Not only the moment you see her, but the moment you hear her voice, because she is known to bring what? A unique sound, relatable lyrics, especially for women, she has energetic choreography, fashionable outfits, and on many occasions, she utilizes a girl band. Band. So a brand, you all know, if you've been following Beyonce, we, we remember she just did not start here at the age she's at. Beyonce's been doing this for a very long time when she was a kid. So I want you all to understand this as well. A brand does not happen overnight. It is a process of building over a period of time. So I want you even now, I want you to think about it. I want you to ask yourself, how do you want your students to feel when they interact with you? I want you to think about it right now. You can share it in the chat. Um, or I want you to write it down. How do you want your students to feel when they interact with you? Let me see if I see what some people are saying. Okay, yeah, we got the little red. What, what is it that you would want them to see? Seen, heard, inspired, feel heard, caring, attentive, knowledgeable, uh-huh, comfortable and safe, approachable, 
so they can ask anything confident, valued, to feel at home, away from home. Oh, I, this is what I'm saying. Being included, covered, shocked, but intrigued, uh -huh. relatable, personable, heart, my heart, and passion. So those are just some of the things in which thank you all so much for sharing. And I want you all to remember those things that you want them to feel. Because if those are the things that you want them to feel, you all, these are ways in which you will put yourself out there. If you want them to feel that you're passionate, that means you have to be one who is able to listen and to hear and to feel what they're dealing with. And so even confident, it's even in the tone. Today, we to students today, we are going to talk about yay, 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 yay. We are here and let's go, let's go, let's go. Just like I'm saying, ready, 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 ready. All right. So you stand in those areas, how you want them to feel as they interact with you. And there are three things as well, which is what are the things that are most important to you? Some people as we always talk about, even when we talk about social media and brand building, you have three areas. People want to um, feel entertained. They want to be inspired and they want to be educated. So you can even intertwine those three things together. So I always want you to remember entertained, inspired or ed and, and or educated. So start thinking about you. How do you want to be perceived out? How do you want to be perceived as well with your students? You want to entertain them? You can do that as well as inspire them. Do you feel that you are just, I'm just here to educate them, which is just fine. That is what you're here for. And so that is what, when people are looking at you, they begin to evaluate. Okay, I'm inspired by her. I'm inspired by him. Wow, they provided me with so much information that, oh my goodness, I have to come back and hear them for, for more, all right? And so when we look at those things, you guys, that is where we are all about. So your visual identity brings on an emotion, an emotional response that compels people to interact with you or not. Sometimes everyone's not your cup of tea. And so we have to be mindful of that as well. All right. So let's move on to the next slide here. Did I go backwards? Okay. So let me move this out today. Oh, I think I went backwards. Okay. Let me go this way. So now you guys, when we talk about this and we're, we're talking about video and we're talking about all of these things that we're doing because at the end of the day, most students love to see us on video. And this is what, especially when we're teaching online, all right? So I want you all now, I want you to think back to the last time you saw a notification pop up on social media. How many of you guys are on social media? Raise your hand. Mostly everybody in the world are utilizing social media. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So a lot of times I want you to think back. When was the last time you saw a notification pop up on your social media feed of an influencer? You saw, I'm gonna pull my phone up right here. You saw they were going live and you clicked. So why did you click? You clicked because from the in, their impact, consistency, lasting impression, you were curious about what you were going to gain from them today, whether you were going to be entertained by them, whether you were going to be inspired by them, whether you were going to be educated by them, and you felt it would be valuable. Well, guess what? The same goes for your students. They look for the same thing from you. And that is part of your brand identity. Having them to um, come in and say, oh, I know I am going to receive a fund of knowledge. I know I am going to be inspired. I know I am going to be entertained. And so it operates the same way when you look at people on your social media platforms. They're always, there's always someone or others or some ones that really, really catch your attention. So your job is also to do the same thing with your students, okay? So let's move on to the next. 
So now I'm asking you all here, as we say, we ready, 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 ready. So I want you to begin to ask yourself, what do you bring to the table? What is your value proposition? Besides a colorful thing, what is the message in which you provide? Because when we look at video, just like right now, you see me via cyberspace. I'm talking to you and I already know you have an impression about me. I, I want to hear, what is your impression of me right now? I'm going to look into the chat. When you hear me and as you see me, what's your impression? Energetic? Confident, bright, thunderous, thank you. Enthusiastic, energy, uh-huh. Passionate, good words, good words. Love what she does, fun and exciting. Powerful voice, and uh-huh. Ooh, contagious enthusiasm, I love it. Uh, you wanna be my friend? <laughs> Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Live at five, baby, huh? fun, loves people. I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving these comments in the chat, Michelle. I'm loving entertaining, delicate sound and the, all inspiring, all of these things. So you already hear me via, you see me on video live because we're in real time, as well as this chance you get the chance to hear me. All right. I always want you all to remember these things. All right, because video shows you all the true essence of who you are. I could literally hear someone else on video and pay attention to them. And I'm already perceiving and I'm already getting a glimpse of who they are. Whether you talk soft, whether you're energetic, whether you're enthusiastic, whether you know what you are talking about. One thing we have to realize, students are very smart. You know why? <clears throat> we living in different cultures. They're on these phones at all times. Everything is via internet. And that is how they're connecting to the world. So they have the ability to connect to anyone, any be any place at any time. And that's the world we're living in now. And you have to be mindful of that. And so I want you to begin to evaluate. This is part of brand identity. Think about what is it that you bring to the table? What is your value? So as we said, videos show the true essence of who you are. So now here's the key. When you're putting yourself out there as the brand, because you are the brand. Now there's a difference between brand and branding. Branding is when you're putting yourself out there. You're utilizing certain um, platforms. You're utilizing certain, um, it could be um, you're using your logo. My color is red. I have flowers behind me. And I'm always showcasing those areas. That's branding. I am the brand, but when you recognize me as the brand, you also know, okay, she loves red. She loves flowers, all these things. I have a tendency when I do video to always wear a white shirt. I love big black glasses. I do. And so when we're putting ourselves out there and when we're creating, you first have to know, who am I talking to? Who am I servicing? Because that is how you're going to learn how to become more relatable and knowing how to speak their language. How would it be if I'm teaching um, um, uh, uh, students coming into um, college and they're 16, 15, 16 year olds, and I'm sitting here and I'm saying, okay, students, open up your book. There is a plethora of information on the uh, yada, 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 yada. They're sitting there like, what's, what's plethora? What, what's plethora? So we have to understand you don't have to speak that way to that, you know, that age group because they may not even know what I'm, I'm saying. Now, I may be at a different level, a higher level, and I can say the word plethora. Who knows what the word plethora is? Who, who, who knows that word? What is plethora? Let's see. A lot. Uh-huh. That's it. So when we think about it, abundance, right. But if I'm talking to a 15, 6 year old, they're sitting there like, uh, you losing me. You're not even talking. You're not even on my level. So um, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So therefore, what word would I use? Okay, students, today, there's going to be what? A lot of information that I'm going to share with you. 
All right. They will Google the definition, then you exactly because it. Thank you, Sylvia, because they're going to leave you and start going to Google. And once they start going to Google, you have lost them because now they, everything else is popping up. All right. So you say, all right, students, today there's a lot of information I'm going to be sharing with you. You see how I start back? It's a lot of information I'm going to be sharing with you. So you have to understand. Um, oh, hi, Rachel, your hand is up. Do you have a question? Okay. Rachel may have a question. So one thing is you have to know who your audience is, who you're talking to, because you have to speak their language. What captures their attention? What are they talking about? You have to know what they're dealing with and the trends that's happening with them. And then another thing is, what are your life experiences, your educational background and values? What do you bring to solve their challenges? Now that comes from maybe your life experiences. Remember how I shared with you the story earlier, how the teacher told me I was loud, I was too loud and I almost wanted to dummy down. Well, guess what? Me sharing that story is going to help other people. That's part of my story. Because just recently, I believe it was maybe it was a few weeks ago, I literally had to go speak to some a high, a high school um, in a local area. And there was a girl that stood up. I, I kid you not. She stood up and she said to me, um, I was part of a panel. She said, sometimes my instructors say I, I, I'm too loud. So guess what? I was able to be relatable with her because I heard the same thing about me. Now, it could be that she needs to, I don't know what she's doing in the classroom. She could be just off the chain, huh? Ready, 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 ready at all times. But the thing is, I had to share with her and say, you still have to be who you are because in your future, your purpose is we don't know if you're going to stand in front of a classroom. We don't know what the future holds for you. So never, ever dummy down. All right. And so life always brings us experiences. And it is those experiences that help us to help other people along the way. So your value is also your life experiences, your educational background, your values. What is it that's going to help your students get from point A? to point Z. And then we look at your value is what makes you different or set you apart from your other educators? Could it be your mood, your color scheme? Um, you might be chaotic. Woo! We know in a minute, we got the Jedi coming up in a, in a couple of weeks, huh? We know about them Star, Star Wars and all that stuff. Um, you could be soft-spoken. You could be thunderous. You could be energetic. You may wear big glasses like I wear here. We don't, whatever it is. But that is part of how students remember you from, all right? And so you have to be mindful of those things. So what you're going to do is I want you to begin to write down what are the things that you bring? What value you bring? I want you to, if you got a piece of paper and ink pen, I want you to think about it right now. What do you know that you bring to the table? All right. Now I want you all to share. Some of you all can share in the Q&A. I know you're writing. Um, okay. I know you're writing, but I want you to write those things down. What do you bring to the table? Do you bring, um, are you soft-spoken? which some people, some students need that. You're th enthusiastic, wonderful. Um, all of those things, that's part of your empathetic. You love Trent, love, okay? N your nerd, positive, sense of humor, positivity, willingness to listen. What is your, your calm? Monica says she's calm, geeky. Because guess what? you patient. Guess what? You have all types of students in your classroom. We have students that are autistic. We have students that I, I have a student. I have students that um, are deaf. Um, some students decided to pivot and go back to school. So all of your students are even just coming in from high school. A lot of our students are coming in um, um, at a more mature age because they're looking to pivot in life. And so you have to be mindful of how you put yourself out into the marketplace or how you are seen by your fellow students, by the students, because you still have to be who you are. 
All right. So I want you all to remember those things in which you are putting out and the value you bring to your platform. All right. Ready, 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 ready. All right. Let's move to the next. So when we talk about the value, your value proposition, there's also a vibe. There's also a mood. There's something that they will remember you by. This is part of your brand. You guys see how I'm swaying back and forth? Yeah, yeah, that vibe, that vibe. What's, what's that vibe? So when we talk about the vibe, you guys, we're talking a, a vibe in brand identity refers to the emotional and sensory impressions that a brand's visual and verbal elements create in the minds of others. That's the vibe. It's that overall feeling or mood that a brand conveys through its branding elements, such as a logo, the color palette, the typography, the fonts that you use, the imagery that you use in the background, and the words that come out of your mouth. You remember, what, what was that show that said, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? What, what show is that? I can't even remember, but, but I remember, I remember that line. And so a strong vibe, brand vibe helps to establish that emotional connection, making them feel a certain way about you. It's always you all, when we talk about brand and uh, being the brand that your students remember, it's going to always be about the connection. How do they feel when you come into their presence? How do you make them feel um, when they're around you? And so you have to be very, very mindful about that because it is a part of the connection, them feeling that, okay, I can answer, I can answer questions and I can ask questions because my instructor made me feel connected. I have a student in my class that I knew I was like this, this, this student is is not going to talk at all i mean it was it was hard for them however as we began to go on and on and on you know what they began to open up and to speak and i actually my i was like this my eyes was like a <laughs> but they actually felt comfortable enough to speak in front in front of the classroom as we were on together via video and you all don't know, that made me feel so good because they then felt like I belong. I belong because when I literally in the, in the brand building class that I teach, I asked all of my students to share with me how they see themselves, how do they feel about themselves. And one thing that they said was um, the word sensitive. And I picked up on that because that meant that they have the capacity to hear and feel what other people are dealing with. And so it is the vibe, when we talk about what vibe do you bring um, to, to the classroom, even certain colors and fonts, um, certain vibes. When we talk about the color that I have, it is energetic, all right? But when you're putting and utilizing certain colors, it could be certain logos that you might utilize that you might utilize behind you or inside of your classroom or how you're how you're being portrayed. It is all of those things because we see, for instance, a brand that aims to be associated with fun and youthfulness may use bright colors, playful imagery and have a language that is just full of energy. Recently, a couple of weeks ago, and I and I have here, you don't want this smoke, huh? Ready, 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 ready. I share with my students one day as I was grading some papers and I, I was looking at the papers and I'm like, okay, I know you all can do, oh my goodness, so much more than this. Now, I was able to share that and say that to them because they already knew that they can trust me. They knew I was credible and I wanted to see the best in them. So what I had them do, I said, what I want you all to do when you have time, I want you to go to my social media page. I want you to go and take a look at what I have on there right now. And they said to me, um, Professor Washington, it said, you don't want this smoke. 
And I did that to them because I'm like, okay, okay, I'm looking at some of these grades here and I know you can do better. Who wants the smoke and who does not want this smoke? I'm like, you don't want this smoke. So when I said that, I'm like, uh, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? When I say ready, 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 ready. And I made them look at that and they chuckled and they laughed at it because it made them say, yeah, we want this smoke. We want this smoke. You see how you can have so much fun with your students when you begin to connect and when they feel that you are relatable and you can connect. Now, what now for some of you all, you probably are saying, what do you mean by you don't want this smoke? Who knows what it means when I say you don't want this smoke? When I say you don't, who's <laughs> rush hour, Krista? Okay, I love that line. Okay, who, who okay, no problem. Oh, oh, okay. Who knows what it means when I say you don't want this smoke? You don't want this smoke? Who can share in the chat when I say you don't want this smoke? All right, right. You ain't ready for all I got. <laughs> you don't want any problems. Don't come, don't come for me unless I come for you. Uh-huh. I remember that line, Jennifer. Uh-huh. <laughs> you can do better. They can show you can show yourself better. Right. And so when we begin to think about that, and so what it is, my brand is, as you all said, energetic, enthusiastic, um, relatable, because I know at that, at that certain age and who I'm talking to, they already knew what I was talking about, all right? And so I was able to utilize that information and just say those words to them. Now, if I was at a whole nother level with some uh, another group, of, I may not have used the term, you don't want the smoke. I might have just said, are you ready for this? You all see? So it depends on where I am, who I'm speaking to, and the vibe that I'm looking to put out into the marketplace. All right? So let's move on to the next. Now, here's the thing, you all, and we always talk about. Ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. So what you can begin to do with your students, as you are building your brand identity and as you want to be the teacher, the instructor, the professor, it could be, I don't know who else is here inside of this room, the educator, um, the mother, the father. As you're putting yourself out into the market, sometimes you just need to ask them, when you think of me, what do you think about? What is my vibe? So you guys see how even earlier I asked you as you listen to me and as you see me, what is the vibe that I portray? What, what is the perception? What are you getting from me? Well, what did I do? I asked my students as well. So some of the words that you all said is the same thing that they said for me. They said, you are inspiring. You're encouraging. You're enthusiastic and you're caring. So what do you do? As, as educators, you know what you do? You monopolize on all of that. Be the person that inspires. Be the person that encourages. Be the person that's enthusiastic. Be the person that's energetic. Be the person that's soft-spoken. Be the person that's caring because they need those things. Now, if you ask the right questions, they'll tell you exactly how you're showing up in front of them and how you're showing up in the market, all right? And so what you wanna do is ask because you are not a brand until others say the type of brand you are. You all put that in the chat for me. Someone say, tell, share with me, Let's I just said, I'm not a brand until someone says I'm the brand. Someone type that Type that in the in the chat for me if we're able to still type. I'm not the brand. I'm not a brand until people say I'm a brand. People will tell you exactly what you are and how they perceive you and their personal connection to you. I'm not the brand until people say I'm the brand. And that's real. So I can say, oh, I am, I'm all this and a bag of chips and a red soda. But I'm talking to myself unless other people say, oh, girl, you're all that a bag of chips and a red soda, all right? And so you have to be mindful of that and you will never know until you ask the right questions. So I'm saying to you, what's a red soda? Oh, that's an East Coast thing. I'm from the Midwest. A red soda is a red soda pop. 
You know how you have big red. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. It's red soda. We love red soda back on the East Coast. I'm from the, I'm, I'm originally from Ohio. I'm actually a Buckeye. See, you remember Strawberry Crush, uh -huh, see? So it's it's certain, so I always say, oh, you know, I'm a bag of chips, bag of chips and a red soda. Because, mm, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Yum, see, okay, see, I know it's the morning time. We all probably hungry right about now. But that's it. I want you all, even with your students, ask them, how do you perceive me? What is my vibe? And then you monopolize on that because that's how they see you. That's how they see you. And so uh, the whole package, thank you, Desiree. Thank you, Desiree. And so you want to be mindful of those things, you all, and monopolize on that. Monopolize on your vibe. Remember, that's how they see you. So remember to that's part of who you are. That's part of your brand identity. That's how they remember you. That's how you are memorable. How many of you guys remember, how many of you all remember your, um, your, your teachers at elementary school? Their teachers, I still remember. Well, one particular teacher, and her name was Miss Tate. I remember Miss Tate. And we all have those teachers that we remember. Miss Tate was very stern. But it was something about Miss Tate. Miss Tate wasn't taking no prisoners. You're going to get it. And I still, out of all the teachers, I still remember Miss Tate. And so there's always those teachers that you are remindful of, even as we become older. So guess what? When you put yourself out there and, who, and show who you are, there's students that will remember you the same way. All right? So let's move on. So now let's talk a little bit about the art of storytelling, you guys. And so I shared a little bit with you guys previously about my story. So when we talk about the art of storytelling, it is the practice of using narrative techniques to create a compelling and memorable brand story. That's your foundation that resonates with your students where they feel connected, as I said just previously, and relatable to you. Now, when they feel connected and relatable, they in turn will begin to share with other students the joys of having you as this an amazing instructors with other students because they feel connected and because you are relatable, all right? We already know, we all talk, right? Ready, 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 ready. We all talk. Guess what? Your students talk too. They tell other students, oh, you don't want to take that class because, oh, you want to take that class. You want that teacher. We've all done it in school. Like we, When we go and look at our, our syllabus and or we look at our catalog, we're looking at subjects that we have to take. And what else we're looking at? We're looking at the teacher. And then we're asking people, uh, what was that teacher how, how did they make you feel? How was the class? We're looking at all of these things and students have a tendency to share, you know, um, that information. And so even as an alumni, I'm actually as well, I am an alumni of MSJC. So I also, to become more relatable to my students, I make sure I share that inside of my profile because they then understand that I understand where you're sitting. I also was a student here, so I understand where you are coming from. And so we have to be mindful of that as well, because it is that connection on an emotional level that makes you memorable with your students. All right. So I also said here, you have to be willing to open up. I know sometimes it's very hard for us not to show who we are or becoming vulnerable, but who you are eventually is going to pop out. So you have to learn to be authentic. You have to learn to be consistent. You have to learn to be inspiring and being able to be shareable because your story should be one that customers or I would, I said customers, but I also look at students as customers um, that they want to be, be willing to share with other people. And then the message literally goes viral. All right. And so I always say, as we're here, we're talking about our brand. Remember to humanize your content. 
Make a human. Just like I said previously, I cannot talk to high schoolers and say plethora of information. I have to say a lot of information or as someone said, an abundance of information. You have to know how to be relatable and you have to be able to open up. You have to humanize what it is that you're putting out there. You have to speak their language um, and be consistent. There has to be a pattern here of your consistency in everything that you do and um, being inspiring to others as well. All right, so let's move on. Now, I wanted to share this with you all because how many of you guys love Coca-Cola? I think someone has a question. How many of you all love a Coca-Cola product? Yes, exactly, Michelle. Anybody love Coca-Cola? Okay, you must be a Pepsi. Are you a Pepsi girl? Guilty. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. But there was a campaign that Coca-Cola ran, and you guys will get a chance to see all of this. No, no soda here. Okay, wonderful. Water girl, drinking my Coke. Melissa, that's all I drink is Coke Zero. All right. I don't drink regular sugary Cokes, but I, I love somebody said they're strawberry Fanta. Uh-huh. You love that strawberry Fanta. Um, I I do Coca-Cola, but right now I love Coke Zero. I drink Coke Zero. Um, otherwise, I'm drinking water or I drink ice, uh, which is just a sparkling, sparkling water. Now, one thing about this campaign, and you guys will get a chance to read more in regards to this, um, is that they did a campaign. I don't know if you all remember this, but part of their campaign was to become more connected to the audience. So how many of you all remember when they put a campaign out and the campaign actually had names of people? Anybody remember that? Who all remembers that? There was your names of people like Tanya or um, Aaron. Um, I see all the thumbs going up. You all remember that campaign? Well, they didn't just do that by accident. They did that because they wanted to become more relatable and more connected to the people in their audience. And what began to happen is um, more and more people began to share it. I, I was going to the grocery store looking for my name. How many of you guys were going to the store if you are a Coke drinker looking for the name? I remember my cousin would post on social media in the time. This is what I'm saying, Sylvia. But they did that on purpose because it was part of their they called it their share a Coke campaign. It, but it's part of it was part of their brand. I haven't seen another, I think someone else may have tried it, but they they did that thing. Okay. New Ken would never be there. <laughs> I know you have to kind of scratch it out with a black marker, right? You never found your name. Oh, Brian, you never found your name. I know. Tanya was, I could I couldn't find, of course, La Tanya, but I found Tanya. Um, but I know so sad sometimes we have to tell Coke about that. But anyway, there was a campaign that they ran because they wanted to put something out there that connected with their audience, that made people feel more relatable. And on top of that, it was called a share a Coke campaign because they wanted more and more people to connect with them. And so with that, you guys, they knew exactly the emotions and the climate of the people that they were connecting with. And it was a campaign that many of us loved. And it was super duper exciting in regards to it all. And so make sure if you guys haven't seen that campaign, look up for, look at that campaign. All right. So now you all, we want to talk a little bit about how to enhance your content creation through video. All right. Can you all see my... Oh, hold on. I think I, I blacked out, but I think you guys can see me. Okay, let me go here again. Make sure you can see me. Okay. You're back now. Thank goodness. All right. So here you guys, uh, we talked a little bit in regards to enhancing your con enhanced content creation through video. You all see me talking. This is how I roll whether I am in my classroom, you see that red background, you see that white t-shirt, you see all that going on. That's part of who I am. But first, let's ask ourselves, what is content creation? So when we talk about content creation, y'all, it is the process of producing material in various forms, such as written articles, videos, videos, podcasts, infographics, and more, with the intention of engaging and forming or entertaining your audience. Video plays a huge part 
and how your students are able to relate, understand your vibe, connect with you. So how many of you all are utilizing video more and more? I want to know. How many of you all are utilizing video more and more? Okay, I see the thumbs up. Perfect. It's literally the way to go. All right. When we look up at the market and we look at all of this, it's the video that catches the attention. All right. So as you're instructing, of course, we still have the articles that we utilize. We still have the PowerPoints. We have all of those things. But I always want to make sure that you're always and being very comfortable in front of this camera. We're going to do an exercise towards the end. Being very comfortable in front of the camera. Content creation involves coming up with ideas, researching, writing, editing, designing, publishing, um, all of these things. Um, all of this information is put out here when you're utilizing and creating content, you all, all right? So <clears throat> we already know there are different ways to create your video content. You can utilize, I'm in front of a laptop right now. Um, I also have a desktop. You can create video. I utilize a webcam. I utilize a camera. I utilize my phone. You're about to do something in a minute. Utilizing video equipment, if you have all of this stuff. And you are able to create your content utilizing Canvas Studio. We talked about that in an earlier presentation. Um, utilizing Canvas Studio. I don't know if you all know this, but do you know that you can now create um, and, and do a live on YouTube? How many of you all know you can now do live on YouTube? Let's see. Did you know you can now use live on YouTube? Uh-huh. YouTube now allows you to create, and that means you can save your information there as well. And I also call that when you're creating video and when you're doing what it is that you're doing, YouTube shorts. Yes, yes, all of those things. Did you all know that that's your intellectual property? We call it IP. That's your if that's your property. And so when you're creating, when you have that, that's information that you can use over and over and over again. It's part of your brand identity. The content that you put out here in the market is part of who you are, whether you're energetic, whether you're soft spoken, whether you have chaotic information on your background. People remember you for what it is that you do. All right. And so as we're here, as we're here as well, I'm using a, a webcam and I have a Mac microphone. I'm going to tell you all this because of what I teach, brand building and design, social media marketing. I got all kind of stuff. You'd be amazed if you came to my place and saw the stuff I have. I got little microphones. I have a snowboard. I have a lot of equipment because I'm big on video. All right. And so those are things in which you are able to utilize when you're putting yourself out into the market. Now, here are things we want to look at when you're when you're creating and planning out, when you're planning out your video content. Know who this video is for. Remember how I shared with you all earlier. Who's your audience? Who are you talking to? Are you talking to high schoolers? Are you talking to college students? Are you talking to undergrads? Who are you talking to? So when you're planning out your video, know who you're talking to. I already knew who I was talking to when I came in here today. All right. Now, you also want to understand and you want to choose a topic because you want to make sure um, it could be a specific lesson that you're creating, a tutorial, could be a how-to guide, um, an explainer video all of this information, and then you want to plan out your content, plan the structure and the content of your video, including how long it's going to be, all of this information. And then you begin to record your video from whether you're utilizing your laptop, whether you're utilizing a desktop, all of those other things. And then you're always able to add graphics and, and other um, visuals to it. And then that's when you, after you're done, after it looks good, make sure you put closed caption in there because you don't know who you're going to be connecting to, then you, you begin, you're able to publish and you're able to share it, all right? In, in the midst of it all, all right? Um, did I have a question? Let me, let me see if there was a question here. How can we make sure we get honest answers when we ask? How do you see me? They might say that they think we, they may say what, we, what they think we want them to say. For the most part, Sylvia, should I answer this now, Michelle, or should I wait towards the end? That is completely your call. Okay, so let me answer this real quick here. How do that they give honest answers? At the end of the day, most of them are going to give you an honest answer. 
I was like, okay, I see you, you make me, you're empathetic. Now, if you're, if you're kind of like rough, some students may like hold back, like, mm, I have nothing to say, but you can kind of tell how they're feeling about you. But for the most part, a lot of them will give you an honest answer. They may say, Miss Sylvia, I see you as a caring, a caring person, or you're soft spoken, you know, um, but remember to ask a multitude of students and then get a, then evaluate the certain, which, which's always showing up. Just like you all said I was enthusiastic. Guess what? My students said the same thing. Just like you all said I was inspiring. They said the same thing. Now there were other words that they said as well, but I picked up on some of the key things that uh, more the more uh, more of them were saying. So they may say they think what we want them to say. For the most part, a lot of them will tell you exactly how they feel. So what I want you to do, Sylvia, is I want you to try it. Now what you can do is you can do a um, not just a survey, but say. I'm going to give you all a piece of paper. Do not put your name on there, but I want you to share with me what you think about me. That way there's no names and they'll put down, they'll write it down and then they'll, you can look at it, what it is that they say. Okay. Hopefully that, that helps. All right. Um, when hiring for a department, should we be looking for opposing or complementary brands? Will opposing brands bring energy? Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michelle. Will the opposing brand bring energy to the department or are complementary brands more likely to bring students back? I can make a case for each one, but wondering what the experts say. Now, here's the key. When we talk about opposing and complementary brands, you always want something that's going to complement what it is your mission and your values are within your, your um, school, your department. It always needs to have the same type of, they need to have the same type of values when it comes to when you're interviewing and evaluating what they do. Now, here's another thing. When we talk about opposing, it boils down to how much of opposition. Because the thing is, you always want a diversity that comes into your department or into your school. So you always, I'm telling you right now, you'll be able to pick up when you do the interview you'll be able to pick up on their vibe. How opposing are they? Because at the end of the day, you still want a diverse group because you still want to understand that you have different type of people that are coming in for different things, all right? So you will have to, but the main thing is what are the values, all right? So you want to make sure that when you're interviewing, ask them, what, what do you value? What is your mission? What are you looking to accomplish? Things like that, okay? I'm hopeful that that answered your question. If not, we can go further in, all right? All right, perfect. All right, so this is what we do in regards to that, all right? All right, so let me move on. Now, here we go, because we want to do an exercise. Are you all ready? Can I get some pop fingers popping up saying, ready, 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 ready? Okay, we're doing good. Ready, 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 ready. ready, ready, ready. ready. Hey, ready, 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 ready. All right, so this is what we're going to do, you all. We are going to pull out our cell phones and we are going to create just a little short video because it's part of our content creation, all right? And then after this, I'll also be able to answer some of your questions, but I know it might take a little bit of, bit of time because sometimes all of us, we're trying to be perfect in our video. How many of you all have your cell phones out? You ready? I want to hear ready, 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 ready in the chat. Ready, ready? Let me look at my chat and see what I see. Ready, ready, ready? Get the phones ready? Uh-huh. Yes. Red, this one. See? This one. See? And you, you, you all see how we're flowing here? This is how you do with your students, too. All right? Keep them engaged. Keep them um, feeling that you relate to them. All right. So this is what we're going to do right now, you all. What we're going to do is we're going to create a piece of content here. And um, I want you to think about what e which emotion will you utilize? Now, this is going to be a line that you're going to share. Now, you can pick from one or the other. All right. So your line is going to be, you're going to utilize your phone. How many of you all are 
are familiar with clicking on video on your phone? Let me look in the chat. How many of you all are familiar? How many of you all are not have a problem? Familiar? How come I can't see my? Okay, here we go. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, because what we're going to do is on your smartphone, you're just going to click on camera. Ah, okay. You're going to click on, you can also do this in Canva. The truth be told, right now I'm utilizing Canva on this, on this, uh, on this, um, this presentation. So what you're going to do, even with this, you all, you're going to utilize your phone. You're going to click on camera. You're going to look at yourself. And I should, I'm, I, maybe I, I can get to that too as well, Mamta. All right. You're going to look at yourself on camera. Uh, you, you can fix yourself up. You, you see how I'm doing right now. I'm just looking at my camera. You know, we always want to look cute, right? So I want you to pick a line. You're going to pick a line and evaluate and, and share which emotion will you use. Let's take, I'm going to use the first line. Let's take a quick video to explain this concept. Depending on the type of emotion I want to utilize, I may say, let's take a quick video to explain this concept. You guys got it? Or I can say, let's take a quick video to explain this concept. You all see the type of emotion I'm, or I can say, let's take a quick video to explain this concept. That was kind of dry, right? That was kind of dry. But what I want you all to do is I want you to take your phones and I want you to pick a line and I want you to record yourself utilizing one of these lines. All right, any questions? Let me look in the chat. Where's my chat? Where's my chat? We ready? I want to see thumbs up. Who's ready? Ready, 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 ready. All right. Great, great. So take your phone. Click on camera. Choose a line. Select what, think of the emotion you want to project, whether it is energetic, whether it is soft-spoken, um, enthusiastic, chaotic. Choose, choose, choose the emotion you want to interject and go for it. All right, go. I'm going to give you five minutes to do so. I should have pulled my own, I put, should have pulled some music up, right? Okay, try it. Let's see who says something in the chat. Done. Jennifer is done. Which emotion did you use, Jennifer? Enthusiastic. Ooh, cool. And which line? <laughs> Sylvia said, maybe I need acting lessons. Guess what, Sylvia? You, I'm sure you are just fine because that's who you are. We don't have a lot. You, you probably did real well. Went for curious too, Michelle, huh? Inspiring. Okay. Which line did you guys choose? Let's take a quick video. Let's take a quick video to explain this concept. Positive and encouraging. Cool. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure the other people are still trying to and you know what happens a lot of times? We'll look at the phone like, oh, I didn't like that. Let me do it again. Okay. We don't have a lot of time, but I think a short video would help illustrate this point. So if I'm saying, if I turned on my camera and I said, we don't have a lot of time, but I think a short video would help illustrate this point. See, sometimes it depends on who you are as a brand, how you how you portray what it is that you want to say, or sometimes we allow, just like, like you said, someone said the our, our, our acting lessons. 
And the more and more we do, it depends on what it is that you're trying to say. Just like I said previously, what did I say in another slide? I'm like, you don't want this smoke. So how am I going to say that? You don't want this smoke. That's how I said it. I'm not going to say you don't want this smoke. Now, if I'm trying to be sarcastic, I'm like, you don't want this smoke. But more than likely, because of who I am and the brand, I'm like, you don't want this smoke. You say I use my voice. And so that's how, that's how, because that's how they see us anyway. All right. Let's see. Let me look at the chat. Did everybody get it in? And then I'm going to ha have some time to answer some questions as well. Right. Done. Urgent. Urgent. Cool. Oh, somebody shared the office so they can't even talk about it. And so with that, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And so what I want you all to do, okay, I stick my natural tendency, calm and caring. I am just not good at this. But guess what, Nina? You'll be all right. You'll get, the more and more you practice and get a hang of it, even if you're on utilizing video, you'll get the, you'll get the hang of it. I'm just not. <laughs> the more and more you do it, the more you'll get the hang of it. Because we're in a day and age, just like we're here, we utilize video. And you have to also know how to interject because especially if we're creating video, positive and expressive, perfect. Especially when we're creating video and we're operating and students are able to just follow us along um, just from our modules and the curriculum that we have. They're looking at us and they're paying attention to what is coming out of our mouths and they will they will know if they're if you're relatable or if you're really, really knowing what you're talking about when you're sharing your information with them in a classroom. All right. And so the more and more you practice, the more and more you'll find yourself. I also you have a tendency to utilize my hands because it's also a form of expression for me. So the students as part of who I am as a brand and my brand identity. They already know not only. Am I enthusiastic? But I have a tendency to utilize my hands because I'm trying to get the message across. So a lot of times when we're utilizing our hands, we're also able to share visually what it is that we're trying to convey, all right? Because remember, you'll have all types of students in your class, but you wanna be able to share that information with them that they are able to connect with as well. All right, did you all get it? Okay, perfect. All right, so now, um, I think some of you guys really shared that information here. All right. So I want to say thank you for your time, you all. But first and foremost, before I get there, you all, I want to answer any other questions that you all may have. Any other questions that you all may have for me? Um, here. I want to make sure I left some time uh, 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 open for you all. Sometimes I feel too reserved. So Michelle is right. This is a good way to get over being exactly. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Do we have any questions that any of you all may have um, for me? I think someone talked about creating video in Canva. Was that correct, Michelle? Was it Momta? Uh, we had a comment sent directly to us just saying that it would be helpful to to have a, a separate session on using Canva. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, someone, Jennifer asks, how much is too much video? So let me, let me, let me, let me share with you. How much is too much video? Now, I try to keep my video somewhere between five to eight minutes when I am providing a video to the students. Because remember, you have a particular lesson that you're focused in on. It depends on what it is that you're teaching. Because even with video, and depending on how you're putting the information out there, as long as you have the right script and you know, and you're going straight to your points, I try to keep it between five and eight minutes. Now, this is me because of my class and what I'm teaching, because um, I know after a certain period of time, they're gonna get bored. So sometimes if you have more um, as part of a subject matter, you want to just break it up into different parts. But for someone to just sit there and listen, listen, they may, they'll start to tune out. All right. Um, TikTok is only three minutes. So I use that. Okay. You do that social media as a guy, TikTok, right. 
because a lot of times, yeah, as, as Michelle said, the shorter, the better. One minute videos can be very impactful. Exactly. So it depends on what it is, what you're talking about, what you have going on. Um, and then if it's over a certain period of time, they're going to clock out because you think about you. Are you going to sit there and watch a 10 minute video? Sometimes you won't. Um, and so you have to be mindful, but it all depends on your audience. So for me, I try to, I tend to say, stay there in two times speed. I'll watch it. Ah, see Jennifer. Exactly. Any other, did I miss a question in here, Michelle? There's a couple of questions in the Q and a now. Okay. Let's go there to Q and a, I would just add with the shorter videos, the shorter your videos are, then the more likely your students are to watch your future videos. Mm -hmm. When you start rolling out all really long videos, then I, at a certain point and students aren't going to click, but if they have that in their mind that, Oh, this is going to be short and to the point and focused, it's they're, they're more likely to watch them. That's, that's good. That's good right there. And you know what else? Thank you so much for that, Michelle. You know, what else is good timestamps. So if there's some, something that in particularly that you want to really point out, put a timestamp, and I utilize this as well. If there's a, a point that I want to get, I'll put a timestamp inside of the module, and then I'll, so they can go straight to that um, and get that information. So timestamps, you all, are very, very great at utilization um, in video as well. What is the best, best video platform to use? Oh, my goodness. When we look at video platforms, you all, um, you have different types. We already know. This is what I do in teaching. I do use Canva, um, Canva Studio. But a lot of times what I do, you all, I utilize YouTube. I'll create my video um, in YouTube. Therefore, it stays in YouTube. And then a lot of times I'll then transfer it over um, into Canva because I always, too, I want to make sure that I utilize my closed caption um, for it as well, making sure that the closed caption is well. But a lot of times I will definitely utilize YouTube and utilize like um the private private but when i'm recording but when i'm recording i'm utilizing um i'll utilize zoom zoom is a great platform to utilize because it gives you a clear look to me zoom gives me a clearer look than canva i don't know if anybody else is like that but it gives me a clearer look than canva um and then i'll upload it I'll upload it into Zoom or I can also upload it into Canva because too, for, for me, YouTube, I save all of my information. Michelle, did you? Okay. How does one incorporate or blend one's own identity with a school or department's branding pa parameters and guidelines? Okay. Now, how you incorporate it um, within that department? First of all, you have to ask yourself, what is that department looking for? You know, do they want me to stay in between the lines? Am I able to go outside the lines? Because remember, what you, you're, whoever you are is always going to come out. It's going to show. Now, you can always sit back and say, okay, this is who I am. But you can also ask them, make sure you know exactly where the guidelines and the parameters are. You know, how far are we allowed to go outside of the box or can we go outside the box at all? Because you still want to line up with the department of the school. So you're, you still can shine. Um, you still can be energetic in your video. You still can be soft spoken within it, but maybe you can't have a whole lot of chaos. Maybe they don't want you to have red background. Maybe they don't want. So I always say, ask the school and see what it is that they where you can, um, where you need to stay and what their guidelines are. And when they tell you, try to stay in between those, but still be who you are as a brand. Because remember this, your students, your students still want to you to show up. They still want to show up, you to show up. They still want to be able to feel that you're, you're relatable. They still want you to feel that they can communicate with you. All right. All right. Any other questions? Let me see. Did we answer? Did we get? Did, did we answer those? Okay. TikToks. Okay. 
watching TikToks. There are amazing videos in three minutes about uh huh anti racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TikTok, a lot of, and then here's the key. When we are creating you all, um, your social media platforms really, really will tell you what, stu what your students are, what's trending, what a lot of the students are faced with, um, the information that's out there. You can gain a ton of information in regards to a lot of this um, that's happening in the world and what is trending. And so go be be willing to evaluate what's happening because these social media platforms are going to tell you everything you can google a lot of information you can go you can literally type in like google trends it'll tell you <clears throat> things that people are talking about you can even type in um what's happening in the world today I also share that a lot of information that you can obtain as far as questions are concerned, it's called from Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T um, dot com, as well as Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. It'll provide you with a lot of information. All you got to do is ask it a question and it'll begin to show you what people are asking, what they're challenged with, what they're concerned with and things like that. All right. Instagram will give you great real trends info too. Exactly. Because when we begin to look at all of this information, you all think about who's all, who's always on, who's all, who's always on Instagram. Because there's this particular audience is on Instagram. There's a particular audience on TikTok. There's a particular audience on Facebook. There's a particular audience on Pinterest. Who's who's actually here on Clubhouse? Anybody ever heard of Clubhouse? Yes, no. Clubhouse? Anybody here? I see a note. Okay. I have it. See? Club? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Most people are saying no. Clubhouse is now an audio um, platform where you will get a fund of knowledge. All right. If the Android users are, are now have access, Desiree, they now have access. But you see, you see, most people have never heard of Clubhouse you will get an array of information in Clubhouse. It took forever, right? It did take forever for Android. We're sorry, I'm an iPhone person, I'm an iPhone person. <laughs> but it's another platform where you can gain a ton of knowledge from. And you will have a whole lot of um, big time billionaires, millionaires, people who are experts in their field. And you literally can go into their rooms and listen to what topic of discussion um, that they're talking about and provide you a lot of info, All right? Biology. Okay, cool. Thank you so much um, for sharing that as well, Michelle. Yeah, there's an interesting conversation in chat about, you know, um, how do I break down my my content dense lectures? Like when content is is really intense, how do I break it down into smaller chunks or, you know, shorter yes. videos? And I mean, I just think it's really helpful to stop thinking about having students in a room for an hour and think, when you're teaching online, like dismiss that yeah, and that's right. Have that empower you to think about your content differently. It does. It's not about changing what your students are going to learn. It's about changing how they're going to learn it. How they're so going to learn it. If, yeah. if you're not, if you're not restricted to an hour in a room, then all of a sudden, right. You can be like, Oh, I'm going to focus on this for two minutes. Yes. And then I'm going to focus on this for five minutes. And then I'm going to focus on this, this objective for 10 minutes. And, and that makes your, your content more reusable for students too. So they can go back and review. Exactly. That's it. That is so it. Yeah. So don't sit there because you, they're going to, they're going to zone out. If you try to do it for their zoning out, we already know. Because guess what? You're going to zone out. So yeah, do the chunks. Chunks are great. Yeah. This has been so great, LaTanya. This has been so great. And I, I, I made a couple notes that I just wanted to reflect on a little bit. Sure. One thing that you said that I think is really important to think about is the background. Uh -huh. And not, you know, yes, a tidy background, but beyond that, it's an opportunity. And I hope that, you know, when when Latanya had you all take out your phones and start recording, that that makes you realize like video is mobile when you have your phone. So you can go 
anywhere. And I think just by it going outside and having some kind of natural setting behind you, that could be part of your brand. And then it also really makes you more relatable because you're getting out of your academic environment. So I, you know, that, that background doesn't have to be like, I mean, a background like Latonia's is awesome, right. But it could just be something more simple like that. Um, Exactly. Yeah. And then I also wanted to just say that I personally really appreciated you starting with um, the question, how do you want your students to feel when they interact with you? I found that Mm -hmm. so powerful Mm -hmm. and it's really important as online educators to recognize that a video is an interaction. It's not just a piece of content, it's an interaction and it can actually feel more intimate and personal than being in a classroom because you're not sitting there with 40 other people it's your instructor looking right at you so when you really lean in and you know use a personal voice and be authentic and make eye contact with the camera as weird as it feels that video can resonate in ways that like classroom communications can't that's it it makes a huge difference. And that is the way of the world right now. It's via video. Because as you were saying, Michelle, that's how they can feel you. That's how they feel that they can relate to you because they get a chance to not just see you, but they get a chance to hear you. And it makes a huge difference on how you're putting yourself and portraying yourself out into the world. And um, it's okay to sit back and say, you know, all of us on video, like, oh, that didn't work. But guess what? It's who you are and it's okay. Um, Just relay the message. And the more and more you practice, just like how my students practice, over and over, you'll become more and more um, acclimated to it. And you'll be like, I'm ready. Okay. And that's just how it goes. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Michelle. So good. So good. Yeah. Eye contact is hard. I still, <clears throat> I still don't look at the right place on my phone. There's like a, I, I always look like at, I'm a, I always have to check myself and catch myself because I'm never looking quite at the camera when I talk on my phone, but it really does make a big difference. Yeah. It makes a big difference. And the more we do it, the more we do it. It's good. Thank you. Thank you all so yes. much. I am so, uh, somebody said a plus, 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah, you all been, so much it has been a joy and a pleasure to be with you all remember you are the brand it is your brand identity and this is how you show up this is how you show up in front of your students and always remember just simply ask them <clears throat> how do you all see me and then you utilize that information and be who you are and give it to them when i say ready 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 let's go And the minute they feel that you are relatable and they can communicate and they feel okay, you'd be amazed how much they will open up to you even the more and how you're able to even share more and more information with them when they see you and they will, I'm telling you, they'll tell you how you make them feel. Thank you all so, so very much. And as I say, on a journey, we are always on a journey. Just allow yourself to continue to be your best do what you do. You are here to provide. You are here on purpose. Give it to them because guess what? You're ready, 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 ready. You all, thank you so much. Latanya, <laughs> thanks for giving us all a boost on this Thursday morning. Um, we are so grateful and I know everybody has a lot that they're going to be thinking about and going to go start making some videos and creating your brand and finding your vibe and all that goodness. So um, yay, let's go do that folks. And thank you again, uh, folks, when the, this archive is ready, be sure that you share it with your colleagues. Cause I think it's going to be one that you can all talk about together. Yes. 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 Okay. Take care everyone. Bye Latanya. Take care. Bye-bye.